This is the Thank You Ocean Report. The Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary off the coast of Santa Barbara and Ventura counties in Southern California is one of 14 of America's underwater treasures managed by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. This special ocean area was designated in 1980 as a place where marine resources would be protected and maritime heritage resources as well, such as sunken ships. And that's the focus of our story. In the early days, the California Gold Rush fleet used the Santa Barbara Channel to shorten their journey between San Francisco and Panama. And lumber ships also bringing cargoes down from the Pacific Northwest deliveries of Santa Barbara and San Pedro, Long Beach, and San Diego also passed through the Santa Barbara Channel. Robert Schwemmer is the West Coast Regional Maritime Heritage Coordinator for the Office of the National Marine Sanctuaries. Robert says this area is the site of a number of ships which have been lost. And we've actually identified over 150 historic, both either shipwrecks or aircraft losses in the sanctuary and park waters. And one of the ships that was known about but never found was the George E. Billings. She was the largest sailing ship built by the Hall Brothers in Port Blakely, Washington. And she was, of all the ships they built, she was the largest and named after uh, the man, George E. Billings. He was actually a native of New York that came out to uh, Washington in 1868 and ultimately married into the Hall Brothers family. Actually marrying one of their nieces. And in his honor, they built this ship. It was a five-masted schooner, one of Only six five-masted schooners built in the first half century before 1905 in Pacific Coast waters. So it was a very unique ship in its construction. It was designed to carry 150 million board feet of lumber. And her destinations were mostly Australia, South America, Hawaii, Uh, and in ports, of course, along the uh, California coastline. In her later years, she was converted to a fishing barge. But in 1941, the ship owners were being fined $500 a day and required to make changes to the ship. So the owner decided to scuttle the ship. And so in 1941, there was an L.A. Times article in February that describes the Georgie Billings, and there's a photograph of her burning. And so we took this photograph from 1941, which was not in the clarity of the image was not really good, but we had a second image that uh, we found about 19 years ago that gave a lot of topography of the islands setting behind it. And with those two pictures for 19 years on and off, we've come to locations going, this could be the final resting place of the Georgie Billings, and we'd conduct dive operations with no success. And then in February of 2011, compelling new research was found, which raised the possibility that the last resting place of the Georgie Billings might be located near Santa Barbara Island, and a research expedition was launched. And after many dives, the George E. Billings was finally found, giving us an idea of what shipping was like more than a hundred years ago. The ship itself tells us some of the uh, techniques of how this ship was built 110 years earlier at a yard of the Hall Brothers. And, And the Hall Brothers were really prolific builders. They built some of the finest sailing ships in the Trans-Pacific trade. Matter of fact, we have three other uh, Hall Brother built vessels lost in the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, which include the Dora Bloom, J.M. Coleman, and Comet off San Miguel and Santa Rosa Islands. But we get a better understanding of how these ships were constructed by surveying. A A key mandate of our agency is to explore, survey, and protect submerged maritime heritage resources and share these discoveries. In addition to teaching us a little bit about how ships were built, there is a very real human story that emerges as well. You know, although the discovery of this iconic ship is historically important, connecting the people across this nation to this special place, the Channel Islands National Range Sanctuary, helps us better understand the larger maritime cultural landscape of the Channel Islands. It's a snapshot taking us back to 1941, just 10 months before the attack on Pearl Harbor. Shipwrecks provide 
us with that snapshot of history. They are the time capsule. So now you know that places like the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary are not only protecting wildlife, but preserving the artifacts that tell us incredible stories about people as well. My thanks to Robert Schwemmer. Your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action is to get out and enjoy the ocean and learn about shipwrecks that lie just off our coast. Remember, the ocean takes care of us. Let's return the favor. To learn how, please visit us online at thankyouocean.org. I'm Jerry Kay.